good to be back for another lesson, another day in the Lord. Thank God for everything He's doing in our lives. And I pray this morning as I minister that the Holy Spirit will come upon us now. And the Holy Spirit will reveal and place within us that you will never again be the same in understanding and somehow feeling what was in the heart of God the Father when he loved this wicked and dying world and sent his only son Jesus Christ into this world to seek and save that which was lost. And any of us that truly draw near to the heart of God and truly know this Christ has redeemed us, the Holy Spirit will begin placing in us the heart of God the Father and giving us a yearning desire that we will answer that great commission of go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You see, Jesus Christ tells us in Luke 11, 23, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. If you're a born again Christian believer and you profess Jesus Christ as your savior, if you're not gathering, if you're not actively involved in bringing others to Jesus Christ, answering that great commission, that which Jesus Christ referred to when he says, that which I speak in your ear, shout it from the housetops. No light was ever lit, only to be put under a bushel and hidden there in darkness. So I'm encouraging you that you'll Take up your cross. You'll answer this great calling of your Savior upon your life. I'm pleading with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, put in me, put in you, a deeper hungering and desperation that not one soul will leave the face of this earth without being saved. And so today, with this serious, serious commission that God's placed on us, I'd like to minister for a while about reaching the lost. Is that okay? You know, I was a salesman for some years and being a salesman, they taught me there's four parts to a successful sale. One is identifying the need. Number two, presenting the solution. Number three, creating a sense of urgency. Number four, closing the sale. Now, let me give you an example. If I said to you, do you want to buy a piece of rental property? You'd go, no, no, no I, I don't want any rental property. You see, I didn't present it right. If I said to you, could you use an extra three or four hundred dollars a month cash in your pocket without doing much work? You'd go, well, yeah, I'm really interested in that. What are you talking about? Tell me some more. And then I would explain to you how if you buy this piece of property and we get the right loan on it and we do this, we do that, then you can have this rental property and I will create a way and you won't need a down payment and, and you can just get into this property and it'll start creating a cash income for you. Wow, I, I think that's a good idea. Hey, I showed you the need. I've created the solution. Now it's time for the urgency. You know what, that is a great deal but somebody else will probably buy it before you do. Oh, really? Yeah, I better act quick. I close the sale. 
You see, everybody we meet, we have an opportunity to close the sale. And that's one of the reasons why some people are good salesmen and some people aren't. The other thing that helped me, being a salesman, that I transferred into the kingdom of God, is when the man told me, he said, uh, you're not looking to make a sale. You're looking and trying to go out and be rejected and hear the no. <laughs> I said, I don't want that. He said, well, unless you're prepared to, to hear the no, then you'll never be a salesman. That right there is the reason why most of us never reach anyone for Jesus Christ. You see, not everyone will want our message. And Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. Oh, I, 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 I just, uh, I just, uh, I'm a good person in the community and, and I get along with everybody and when somebody has a need, I go over and help them a little bit. Well, I'm sorry, my Bible says God chose by the foolishness of preaching that he would save the lost. We gotta talk, we gotta open our mouth, we've got to get into this thing. And yes, some will not receive this message and yes, some of us may even die for this message. It, it's a sobering thought to me when I was reading my scriptures and I read in the book of Acts where it says, this power will come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me unto the ends of the earth. But in reading it in the Greek, that word witnesses is martos. I'm probably not saying it exactly right, but it's the same word that you use in the book of Revelation as martyr. And you shall be martyrs unto me unto the ends of the earth. Yes, your salvation cost Christ all that he had. The Apostle Paul said that I might know the fellowship of his sufferings and the glory of his resurrection. You see, the evangelistic church is a suffering church. The church that's left this calling begins to want more teaching teachings on prosperity. Oh, even teachings on relationship. Teaching on family, teaching on all good things. And those are good things. But the calling on the church today is go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. There's a thousand reasons not to go. But there's only one reason to go. And that is the lamb that was slain is worthy. It tells us, thou, O Lord, thou art worthy, thou art worthy. And for thy pleasure we were created. Thou art worthy, O God. You and I were created to bring that glory back to our God. And as talking about the four parts of a sale. There's something else that I use in my life as I go through life and meet people. I want to share that with you this morning. When I turn to uh, the Gospel of Luke in chapter 15, uh, it's uh, in that chapter there's three interesting stories or parables. One is about a woman who lost a coin. And it says that woman having ten pieces of silver, if she loses one, then she will light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she is found it. It tells the story of a man who having a hundred sheep, if he loses one, doesn't he leave the ninety and nine and, and go until he has found the one which is lost? And when he has found it, he returns with rejoicing and says to his friends, rejoice with me. For I have found that which is lost. And I'll tell you, it's likewise in the kingdom of heaven that when one sinner repents, the angels rejoice more over that 
one, then of the 99, there is still saved. And then we find here the parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son gathered his father's inheritance, took all the good things, and left to spend it on his own selfish, riotous living. We then also find a fourth person here in this chapter. It's the story of the elder brother. And so, as I go through life, and I meet people, the first thing I do is I identify who is this person I'm talking to? Is this person a lost coin? A lost sheep? A prodigal son? Or is this the older brother I'm talking to today? Now, the lost sheep, it was lost, but it didn't know its way to get home. I love it when I find a lost sheep. I was sitting in the airport in Monrovia, Liberia, and a man pulled up on a motorcycle. And we began talking, and, and he found out I was a missionary, and he said to me, I'd like to, I'd like to find my way into the church. <laughs> I said to myself, I have a lost sheep. This man is lost. He knows he's lost, but he don't know his way home. And so it's very easy that day as I shared Jesus Christ. And as I asked this man if he wanted to be born again and find his way home, and he so gladly received Christ there, there in the, in the front of the airport that day. And we do find lost sheep in our life. Sometimes we find lost coins. I've known a man for some years, he's a lost coin. He's lost and he doesn't know he's lost. My approach to him in talking, and it's easy to do, start talking about the negative things, how this world is falling apart, how mean and evil people are. And I just keep making sure that he has to come to a point that he knows he's lost, and he'll begin looking for that way home. Oh, every once in a while, I put in something to see if he's ready, but when he isn't, I don't break relationship with him. I just keep pouring down all those dark, evil things that this world is full of and bringing him one step closer to understanding how tragically lost a destined for hell he really is. And so in looking at people as I meet them. Sometimes you'll find the prodigal son. You see, the prodigal son was lost, and he knew he was lost, and he knew the way home. And you know, the father didn't go after him. I don't waste much time on people like that. I just simply say this one here, there's nothing I can say until he comes to himself. You see, it said he was in a pig pen and he come to himself. This may surprise you, but there's people I pray for asking God, please God, take him to his pig pen and let him come to himself there in that stinky, messy place. And then there's a fourth person I come to in my life. That's the elder brother. I believe most of you listening to this are the elder brother. And you see, the elder brother, the father went to him. And his message to the older brother was, Son, all that I have belongs to you. That's what it's all about when we get together is as we share and encourage one another, all that the Father has belongs to you and me. 
Let's reach for the Lord. Let's understand that the love of God towards the elder brother was unrestrained. A lot of people think that when the prodigal son come home that the elder brother would lose something. But the father said, no, you're not going to lose anything here. All that I have still remains with you. And today, if you're in Christ, God the Father say, all that I have remains to you. All that I have remains with you. The problem is, in some of our hearts, we don't truly understand the totality of this calling of Jesus Christ on our life. You see, your call to intimacy and relationship with God Himself. God tells us in Deuteronomy 4.24, for your God is a consuming fire and a jealous God. It's time for us to turn to God with all of our hearts, to serve Him with all of our strength, our mind, our soul. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting with verse 17, Come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and do not touch those unclean things. I will be a God unto you, and ye shall be my children, and I will walk in you. And there's where we want to find ourselves today, isn't it? You see, when we're not fully seeking the Lord, when we're not gathering, we're just standing still. Jesus said, he that's not gathering with me is against me. You see, the Lord takes my double-mindedness, my sin, my indifference. He sees it as my committing adultery against him. Oh, and James 4.4, 4, you adulterers and adulteresses, don't you realize that friendship with the world is enmity against your God? Wow. What do you think about every day? Romans 8, 7. The carnal mind, it's enmity against God. God's a jealous God. Well, I've seen a young man get angry and jealous at times. I've seen young women. Because they believe that other person's thinking about somebody else. But they should be thinking about them. Oh, our God is a consuming fire, a jealous God today. We must be about the Father's business. We must take up the cross. We must shout it from the housetops. We cannot be double-minded. We can't be slack concerning these things. Because we have to be, we're either all in or we're nothing. The scripture says you're either in or you're out. You're either proclaiming the gospel and gathering with God or you're against Him. Colossians chapter 3 tells us that when we come to Christ, it's everything. Let's turn there. This is Colossians chapter 3. If you have then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not beneath, for you are dead, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. For when Christ, who is your life, shall appear, you will appear with him in glory. Put to death, or mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, your uncleanness and covetousness and fornications, idolatrous thoughts. Oh, it's a time for you and I to examine our lives again this week and say, Oh God, is there a place in my life where I'm losing my affection for you? I found myself praying this week again, Oh Lord, send your fire. Send your wind, send your spirit to me, stir me up, 
Keep me going, oh God. Give me the energy. Give me the strength. Give me the vision. Give me that burning urgency that was in your heart, eternal God, when you sent your only son to die for me. Let that burn inside of me. Let me, when I find and meet people in my life, let me look at them as those, where are they in the kingdom of God? Let me make sure that I approach them not with indifference and apathy, but let me be someone who's running a race, who's focused on his calling, and knowing that I must take this gospel to the ends of the earth one person at a time. Let me be able to say to the prodigal son, good day. Let me say to the lost coin, oh, don't you understand how dark and evil this world is? You're lost. Let me just simply with love and tender kindness take that lost sheep, whether it be in an airport, whether it be in the neighborhood, wherever it might be, and let me guide him home back to his Savior, Jesus Christ. And let us, as we gather in fellowship, never cease to rejoice in joy and encourage one another and keep reminding one another all that our Father has now belongs to you and me. Let's focus. Let's take a new perspective of who we are in our relationships and in our life. Oh God, let that fire burn again of Pentecost in our hearts and minds and lives and souls. And let us not pass another person by that needs to be brought closer to the throne of grace. And let us, oh God, pray the prayer of Psalms. I ask of thee, oh God, the heathen for my inheritance and the uttermost ends of the earth as my possession for the glory of my God. For the Lamb who is slain is worthy, worthy, worthy. And for thy pleasure, O God, we have been created. Let us serve him with diligence, with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our souls. And let us take this gospel and love our neighbor the same as we love ourselves. Bless you. Oh, I'm so full of the joy of the Lord. And may your portion be the joy and the peace and the victory that is ours through Jesus Christ. Amen.